Hello friends, welcome to the studio. Today I want to share with you a project inspired by one of my favorite artists, Zhu Bing. He's an artist from China, although he's also lived here in the United States of America. He's still making art today, and if you go to his website, you'll see a project that he finished just last year. Zhu Bing is really interested in something called calligraphy and how it can be a lot like drawing. I've been doing calligraphy for a very long time. This is a report that I did in eighth grade about hamsters and for the title page I wrote the title domestic hamsters in this very fancy writing style. That's what calligraphy is. It's fancy or beautiful writing. And for as long as people have been writing, people have been doing calligraphy. Here's some calligraphy that I did just this year, not for a special occasion, but just for practice. It's a different style of writing, and I was practicing using this new white ink that I wanted to try on a dark paper. A lot of people like to use calligraphy for when they get married for their wedding invitations and anything that's printed out for the wedding. But there are also people who make calligraphy just to be a work of art for you to enjoy looking at. And this magazine is all about calligraphy artists. A lot of calligraphy artists also make art books. But I wanted to show you this page so that you could see all these examples of calligraphy done in unusual ways. So here's some calligraphy that was traced into sand at a beach. And here's some calligraphy that was drawn on a sidewalk with water in the fall. China has one of the oldest writing systems in the world. And Zhu Bing has always been interested in making writing and calligraphy a part of his art. Some of the oldest words in the Chinese language kind of look like what they are, what they mean. This is a character for mountain. Do you see the shape of the mountain in the shape of the word? What if I drew a mountain shape on top here? Now do you see it? Isn't that neat? So Zhu Bing took a trip to the Himalayas and while he was there, he did some drawing in his sketchbook of the landscape around him. And instead of using lines and shapes to draw mountains and trees and flowers, he used Chinese characters or words to draw all of those things. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to show you now how to write some different landscape words in Chinese. You don't need to use a brush and paint. You can use crayon. Let me get a dark crayon. There we go. Okay. So the first word I'm going to write is water. Just like with English letters, the order of the strokes does matter. We don't write the letter M this way, do we? No, we write the letter M this way. So watch carefully as I write each word. Here is the character for water. And here is the character for river. And I think it really does look like a fast moving river.
grass. Flower. Stone. Tree. I think this looks like a pine tree. Woods. I think it's neat that the character for a forest is the character for tree just repeated? Wind. Cloud. Sun. Moon. So now that you know how to write or draw all of these characters, you could use them to make a drawing of a landscape. You could draw the landscape that's right outside your window. Or you could draw a landscape that was in a photograph from a vacation. Or you could draw a landscape from your imagination. In Asian art, a lot of pictures are on wide and thin paper, thinner than eight and a half by 11 copy paper. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the shape of my paper. I'm going to measure five and a half inches away from one long side of my paper. Cutting along this line will change the rectangle of my paper to a one to two ratio. That means that the short side of my paper is equal to half of the long side of my paper. And that is a traditional shape of paper used in Chinese art. A landscape painting can be vertical or portrait format and it can be horizontal or landscape format. I suppose it depends on the view. If I were going to draw a landscape with a river, I probably would want to do a horizontal. If I was going to do a landscape with some mountains, I would probably prefer to do a vertical. I am going to make a landscape that I can see right outside my window. And I've taken a photograph of it right here. So looking out of the window down on the parking lot, I can see the picnic area. And behind that, I can see this hillside. And there are trees growing all along the top of the hillside. Behind the hill is a big building. And then farther away is a forest. I do not want to draw a big building or cars or the picnic area in my picture. I just want to draw the landscape. And that's something that you can do as an artist. 
you don't have to draw everything that you see when you're looking at your subject. You can decide what is the most important, what feels special to you, what do you want to share with other people. And this is an idea that we also see sometimes in Chinese art, the idea of space or emptiness in the picture. It means that there are things that you can look at, like trees and hills and sky, and there are things that you don't look at, just empty spaces that allow your eye and your mind to rest for a moment. So if I'm going to draw this landscape, I want to decide what to draw. It's important. And I'm going to use my characters to help me do it. So the row of trees is important. So I'm going to draw trees by writing the word for tree on my paper. Black and white is a traditional choice of colors in Chinese art. And what I'm doing is I'm stretching out the character because these trees are very old and very tall. They are on top of a hillside and the hillside is covered in grass. So I'm going to use the character for grass create my hillside. To keep this interesting for me and for someone looking at my picture, I'm going to change the size that I'm writing the word. It's a big hillside. There are a few trees here at the edge of the parking lot. And I like this idea of making large and small things in my picture. There are some flowers planted along the top of the hillside. So I'm going to draw some flowers as well in my picture. I want to remember how to do the character for flower. There it is. And it was a beautiful sunny day when I took this picture. And there were some clouds right along here. So I'm going to stretch out the character for cloud in between the trees. I'm going to leave these areas empty and this area empty as places for my eye and my mind to rest when I'm looking at my landscape. There are some artistic variations that you might want to do with this project. 
So let me show those to you. You might decide that you want to use colors that match the colors that you see in your landscape because sometimes it can be harder to see the difference in the characters. So here in this version of the landscape, I used brown and green for writing the trees. I used gray for writing the clouds. I used a pink for writing the flowers because that's the color of the flowers that I see outside my window. And I used some different greens for writing my grass. I still left empty spaces for the mind to rest looking at the picture. Another variation I wanted to show to you is this one. So I started doing the traditional black and white landscape drawing. I used a Sharpie for this picture. And then after I was finished writing the landscape, I went back with my crayons and added color. And I tried out a lot of different ideas and you might like some of them and want to try them too, or they might give you an idea of your own. So one thing I did was took the crayon color and shaded in the paper behind the words. So green behind the grass, uh, gray behind the clouds, pink behind the flowers. But then I had the idea of writing the words again in crayon. So here I've written grass in two colors of crayon and I wrote flower again in the pink crayon. And up here in the blue of the sky, I actually wrote the character for, see what it is? That's right, I wrote the character for wind. And I made the character bigger and smaller because I imagine that was like the wind rushing through the sky, getting louder and softer. And I really like that idea. I like using the crayon and the black for my landscape. Zhu Bing is an amazing artist and he's always inspiring me to try new things, especially with calligraphy. And I hope that he has inspired you too and you enjoy writing the landscape that you see or that you imagine. Have fun. I'll see you next time.